Coming up on this edition of Parkland TV, we're giving you an inside look at the front lines of the coronavirus and an organization working to impact the lives of our youth. I'm Maya Hamla. Stay tuned for this and more exclusively on Parkland TV. Welcome back to the sixth week of Parkland TV Off the Air. Today is Friday, April 24th. All senior and video submissions are due today to parklandsdtv at gmail.com. If you're a senior, you can submit a video with your name, school, major, and sport if you have one. These videos will air on May 1st. In addition, submissions for the Education Foundation's Parkland's Funniest Home Videos can still be turned in through the PHS website. To start our show, Mrs. Benick has a message on behalf of the administration. Hey Parkland students, this is Mrs. Benick doing my week three check-in with you during what I've dubbed as Corona Um This week marked obviously a, an important week for all of us because it was our first week that students were able to log in and start doing some um, assignments. So if you haven't had a chance yet to do that, make sure you log in your Schoology accounts, um, see what your teachers have posted. Um, if for some reason you haven't been able to get into Schoology or you're just unable to do so, please email your teachers and let them know um, whatever your issue might be. Um, your teachers are really looking to connect with you and hear from you this week to figure out how best to support you moving forward. So it's really important that you do that. Um, so make sure you make those connections. This week, we're marking attendance um, based on whether or not you've participated in some way, shape, or form. So that's why it makes it even more important that you make those connections, log into Schoology, et cetera. Um, that way, we know you are able to access what needs to be accessed. Next week's a short week. It's a three-day week. Um, you'll have some smaller assignments to do. Uh, work will still be posted on Monday, but will be due on Wednesday, so make note of that. Um, you do have spring break, so Thursday, Friday, and Monday are still very much intact for you and hopefully you get, you get to spend some valuable time with your families and that you stay safe and stay healthy um, and hopefully you use that time to maybe try some new things that you haven't done you heard me talk about that in my first video great opportunity to try some different things so um, for me for example I'm not one who usually cooks or bakes a lot but I have been um, using some time on weekends to try my hands at that so um, you know, really good time to do that. But anyways, I hope you are all doing well, that you stay safe, you enjoy your weekend, have a safe and productive weekend, and as always, go Trojans. Thanks, Ms. Fennick. As you most likely know, this past Wednesday was Earth Day. It's a day to appreciate the natural beauty of our planet, but also a day to recognize how we're impacting it every day. Here are some tips on how to reduce your ecological footprint and help our planet. The best lifestyle choice you can make to help the planet is to reduce your meat intake. Animals need an astronomical amount of water and land to be fed and raised into the meat that you eat. This means wasting a lot of water to cultivate the animal's food and clear cutting forest for them to graze. Red meat is even worse because cows also contribute to pollution. Cows release methane, which is a greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change. In addition to livestock, fish and seafood also contribute to environmental problems. Fishing nets and lines make up around 47% of waste in the ocean. Obviously, being vegan or vegetarian is the best way you can help, but even just going on a no red meat diet or choosing vegetarian options at restaurants is helpful. Another incredibly important way to help is to stop using single-use plastics. To do so, purchase a reusable water bottle that can last you years instead of throwing out a plastic one every time you use it. You can also purchase reusable shopping bags instead of using plastic ones in grocery stores. When eating, use real plates and silverware instead of styrofoam and plastic cutlery. If you're packing your lunch, use a reusable container, preferably steel or glass, rather than a plastic bag for your snacks. One mistake that many people don't even realize harms the environment is shopping. After agriculture, the fashion industry is the second largest contributor to water pollution. You can help by boycotting brands that use fast fashion, a form of design that uses cheap dyes and fabrics. These clothes are made by cutting corners in production so that you can get the trends as fast as possible. Because they're cheaply made, you often don't get many uses out of the product and have to throw it away in a few short months or years. Many inexpensive online brands are the culprit for fast fashion. In addition, buying your clothing at thrift stores and donating clothes are both great ways to reuse clothing and help the environment. 
Besides clothing, you can also shop sustainably by looking for labels that say eco-friendly, shopping local at small businesses and farmer markets, and looking for eco-friendly alternatives to plastics like a bamboo toothbrush. There are also many changes you can make to your house. To reduce your energy and electricity use, open windows or throw on a sweater instead of using air conditioning and heating. You can also use LED light bulbs, unplug electronics that you're not using, wash your clothing in cold water, and use a clothesline instead of a dryer. If you want to use a reusable water bottle but don't trust your tap water, consider investing in a water filter. Another large contributor to air pollution is transportation. You can help by carpooling, taking public transportation, and walking or biking if the distance is short. You can also compile your errands into one day to avoid taking many trips back and forth to your house. One final way to help is activism. Encourage your friends to live sustainably by sharing your tips with them. Spread the word about sustainable living through social media. You can also sign petitions through facilitators like change.org or contact your local companies and officials and ask them to operate eco-friendly. For more information about your own use, you can visit footprintcalculator.org to take a quiz and see how large your ecological footprint is. Remember, change starts small and every step counts. Speaking of counting, news correspondent Sean Nekich is here to help us keep track of what day it is. It's Friday. Thanks, Sean. As we all know, the coronavirus is a serious challenge for our community. Every day, our nurses and doctors are putting others before them and treating COVID-19 patients on the front line. Kelly Seckler and Alpha Anon have more on the current state of our frontline heroes and a word from our doctors and nurses. In this time of hardship, our community has really stepped up to support local hospitals and doctors. Here's the Director of Volunteer Services from Lehigh Valley Health Network, Carla Bockel, sharing with us how the community has been giving a hand. Our community has been exceptionally gracious, donating meals, snacks, masks, supplies, greeting cards to our patients, and even cards of thanks to our employees. While our 1,500 volunteers across the network are not volunteering at this time, our volunteer services staff has stepped up to the plate and provided the opportunity to serve and deliver all of these things that have been given to our employees by the community. We thank our community with all of our hearts for thinking of us at this time of need. Another fun way the community has been helping out is by having different parades to show how much we appreciate the hard work all the doctors are putting into helping us. Recently, an organization called Jeep Enthusiasts of Eastern PA came out to hospitals in our area to show their support. Now here's president of Lehigh Valley Hospital Muhlenberg, Robert Begliomini, on what these parades mean for all the workers and families watching them. It means uh, a great deal to our staff. Um, this is really hard work for them, for our nurses, our, for our respiratory therapists, our physicians, um, everybody who's involved with taking care of, of COVID patients, and those that support those that are taking care of COVID patients. There's just a tremendous amount of time and effort that everybody puts in. And to know they're being recognized and thanked for their hard work really means a lot to them. It gives them a boost, gives them a boost, uh, not only today, but on into the future to know that our community is rallying around them, that is supporting them, and, and a day like today, uh, with all the Jeeps coming. Um, last week we had the ambulance come and firefighters and it just meant a whole lot to our people um, and gave them a real boost. Also, here's a quick update on how the hospital is doing and how we can continue to win the fight against COVID-19. Uh, things at the hospital are going as well as expected. Um, our team has uh, done just a tremendous amount of work in really a very short period of time to prepare not only the hospital but the community that comes to the hospital uh, for care. Whether that's care for a traditional illness or problem uh, and for COVID. Um, but everybody has masks, we wear them all the time. I'm not wearing it not now for the interview, but we're all wearing masks, we all get screened when we come in the door. We have PPE for all our nurses and physicians and therapists and others. 
um, and other departments. Um, so we've done a lot of work to prepare um, and we're all very proud of that and we're doing a really, really good job. Uh, in terms of flattening the curve, uh, clearly the best thing to do to, to flatten the curve is to stay home, um, stay out of crowds, make sure you're protected um, and use good hand hygiene, make sure you're washing your hands and using hand sanitizer, keeping a distance from one another, all these things, all of them are very, very important. And I think recently we're seeing that curve flatten a little bit and so that's very encouraging news. We need to keep on that trend um, and follow the rules that are put out by the CDC, by the governor's office and others to uh, make sure that we are doing everything we can do as individuals to flatten. Thanks, Callie and Afra. COVID-19 isn't only affecting our healthcare system. Other institutions like sports have been forced to cancel their seasons and reevaluate their course of action. Peter Lambrinos gives us insight into how the NBA has responded to COVID-19. With coronavirus putting a temporary end into sports, sports leagues like the NBA are put into a situation to halt their regular season and think long and hard about the future of their league. So how is the NBA responding to this pandemic? Adam Silver, the league commissioner, initiated a hiatus that stays into effect until it is safe to continue the season. During that time off, NBA teams and players have donated over $38 million to COVID-19 relief groups. The league also partnered with Fanatics to produce face masks to protect those who are on the front line combating the virus. But what about us, the fans? How does the league entertain and engage with their fan base that stretches all over the world without hosting a single basketball game? Well, the NBA has done a couple of ways to provide some sort of entertainment. On their YouTube channel, the league is posting well-known games that go into the wild, like Game 6 of the 2013 NBA Finals as well as highlights from every single team. Box, back out to Allen, his they also hosted a 2K tournament, where players like Trey Young and Devin Booker showcased their video game skills, as well as a horse tournament, where players like Chris Paul and Zach Levine go shot after shot to see who is the ultimate champion. If you're more into documentaries, ESPN is airing a documentary called The Last Dance, an in-depth live look on the 97-98 Bulls and how Michael Jordan won his sixth and final title. For Parkland TV Off the Air, I'm Peter Lambrinos. Now back to Maya. Thank you, Peter. In times like these, each person needs to take their own action to help prevent the spread of the disease. Alondra Reyes gives us helpful information on how and why to wash your hands amidst a global pandemic. Hello guys. Today we'll be showing you how to wash your hands and to get all the bacteria out of your hands because it is very important to wash your hands during this quarantine because we don't want to get sick as well as we don't want to get corona. So all you need is your handy dandy antibacterial soap and some hot water. So I'm going to show you how to wash your hands in a second. First you want to turn on your hot water, then you want to take your antibacterial soap and pump it in your hand and start going like this with your hands. In fact, a little water if you want to. Um, first, you want to get the outside of your hands like this. Make sure you go in between the fingers like that. Then, you want to take your thumbs like that and start doing this. Then after that, you want to take your fingers and scrub in the palm of your hand to get all that dirt and bacteria out of your fingernails and then you're going to repeat that same thing with your other hand and do it like this. Basically that. During this whole thing you want to be singing a happy birthday song or any 30 second song that fits and then you want to go like that in the water, take it all up now and basically you're done. Thanks Alondra. Besides washing your hands, another way you can help to stop the spread of the coronavirus is to wear a mask. This is why Governor Tom Wolf placed an order that all customers and employees must wear a mask. News correspondent Amanda Cohan has more on this developing story. On Sunday, Governor Wolf put a new order regarding coronavirus safety measures for businesses. 
Part of this order requires stores to limit the number of people inside to half the store's certificate of occupancy. Businesses will also need to set aside a certain time for high-risk elderly patients at least once a week. The order has a special procedure in case the business has had someone with a probable or confirmed case of COVID-19. There are many more safety precautions that businesses must take, but the most notable is that essential workers and customers must now wear masks. In fact, stores can deny entry if you are not wearing a mask for a non-medical reason. The CDC has tutorials on their website on how to make cloth masks, whether or not you can sew. The best way to keep them sanitized is a washing machine. While stores may be becoming less crowded, the feeling of discomfort remains. Establishments are now implementing new security measures to help stop the spread. This includes adding barriers at registers, assigning an employee to wipe down carts and baskets, and having hourly scheduled hand washing. Hopefully soon, these new measures will take effect. It may be difficult, but wearing a mask will help flatten the curve. We can all get through this together by staying apart. Thank you, Amanda. While the future may seem unclear because of the coronavirus, it's still important to plan ahead. But planning for college can be especially tricky for high schoolers who aren't sure where they want to go or what steps they need to take. Darlene Diaz has more on this with her first installment of Darlene's Preparing for College Survival Guide. Hey everybody, my name is Darlene Diaz and I'm here to help you guys prepare yourselves for the life that is college life. Now, I'm not in college, but my brother has been for three years. So he's been helping me gather a few tips to help you guys so you can head into college knowing how to do the simplest things. Episode one, maintaining a clean living space. Keeping your living space clean is a huge deal. Did you know that being around clutter makes it harder for your brain to focus? Not to mention that mess equals stress. Tip number one, try not to bring or buy things that you don't need to your dorm. Some people tend to overpack thinking they need certain necessities like an absurd amount of clothing when in reality, you don't really need a hoard of stuff. Of course you want to have a little fun here and there, so it's not bad to pack a couple of games, but try not to bring your whole room to college. Tip number two, make your bed in the mornings. Doing this the moment you wake up is really important. It gives you a sense of pride in knowing that your first task of the day is done, making you want to do more. Not to mention that a messy bed doesn't look good in any room. Tip number three, clean a couple of minutes a day. You don't have to go out of your way to clean. Take some time to clean while you wait for that video game match to start. Or just take some time to clean while you wait for the food to finish cooking. Doing this every day will create a habit for you, leading you to clean up after yourself. Tip number four, wash your dishes right after using them. This will lead to less mess and you won't be stressing about when you should be doing the dishes because you already did them. Tip number five, designate a day to deep clean. Doing this will ensure that your living space is fresh and clean every week, keeping you healthy-minded and healthy in general. Make sure to follow these tips so you can live comfortably in college. As for now, stay safe and stay healthy. I'm Darlene Diaz, and I'll see you next week with more advice. Thanks, Darlene. This year, Parkland TV was given the opportunity to visit Team of We Happyville, a nonprofit organization in Baltimore, Maryland, that aims to improve disadvantaged communities by fostering change and inspiring youth. Here's an in-depth look on the impact that Team of We Happyville has on its community. You see a lot of different people. Some look like them, some don't look like them. But this is the holistic approach to be a better person, and that's what we're trying to do, man. Just attack it on all levels and understand we over me. We can do great things together, but it starts with agape love and understanding Happyville is a choice. It's a mindset to say, I'm taking control of my happiness, and it's not based on money, cars, clothes, social status, or how you look on the outside. It's from within, and it's positive. It's not a negative behavior, so. Don't knock it down, don't knock it down. There we go. Hey, I want to catch it. All right, one turn. Come on. Here at Robert W. Coleman, we have a very diverse student population. Our students face so much adversity out here in the world. Some of our students are homeless. Some of our students move around from place to place. Some of our students have no structure at home. So it's very important when they are here, they are in a structured environment. We're teaching them that education is the key to the future. A lot of kids, they go through stuff that, you know, a lot of adults haven't even been through at a young age, so it's like trauma, like we post-traumatic stress, like people in the service go through. A lot of kids all over the world are stressed out. They, they have trauma, but the difference is between the service and other things, we're not getting the proper help. 
So all the youth programs and people out here as advocates that care about the youth, adults, and even our elderly, um, more specifically for the youth, make sure you allow those individuals to participate in their own development. We're responsible for developing the youth, but we're also responsible for including them. They don't feel included, so the participation of our youth is not where we need it to be because they don't feel like they are part of it. They just feel like they're being told to do these different things yeah. and they don't have a voice. So we gotta give them a voice. Even though some of the things we might disagree with, let them pay them out. We all need help. It's okay to get help. Just don't give them a life, be nasty and be violent and hurt yourself and hurt other people. So Team and we started actually at with the Harlem Wizards in the van because you know we had to set up, we had to unload, we had to break down, do those things. So I started saying, that's not Team of We. And then it took on a lifestyle of its own. And then the, the people at the Harlem Wizards, we started using that in our meetings. That's not Team of We. And then it took on its own lifestyle. Now, Hattieville, I used to always talk about, man, I'm in Hattieville. You're not in Hattieville. And eventually that took on a whole mindset. So I put it all together because Hattieville and Team of We go hand in hand. So We Over Me, Hattieville is your mindset. Team of We is the movement because all great things in any culture has come through people working together with a We mindset. So that's how we started it. And the first drive we actually did was just me and my, one of my close friends, Omar Smith, at William Packer Elementary School. Harlem Wizards gave me some stuff. I went there, gave it away, did an assembly. And now God is blessed to this. We did three schools this year and a hundred book bag and adopted two families, a mother of seven and a dad with two men. So we're blessed and it's all from we, other people believing in the movement, we over me. The cold out here, they come down to Baltimore and they're not scared to come. Man, we love everybody. Agape love for everybody. Hatfield for everybody. We're going to take one person at a time to Hatfield. We will break this cycle of hate and violence. Anybody that wants to help, help us out. Help us buy the block and turn it into Hatfield. Do it for good. I know somebody out there got that bread. Come on, get that bread and somebody's going to change. We're going to buy the block and take it to Hatfield. We love everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you to Team of We Happyville for giving us this opportunity and for being a force of positive change in our community. In Parkland High School news, our science teachers got together to create a special shout out for their students. Thank you to the science department. Parkland High School and other schools in the district all had their spring sports seasons cut short. Last Friday, their scoreboards were lit up to commemorate seniors and athletes who weren't able to play their sport this year. To close out our program, news correspondent Ken Carpinetti has more on this story. Thanks, Ken. We have one final announcement for the class of 2020. This week, Parkland released guidelines and more information for ending senior year, including updates on graduation, prom, and other festivities. A virtual graduation will be held on the original date of June 9th. They have also reserved August 4th for our traditional graduation ceremony. 
For prom, Parkland has reserved the steel sacks for July 19th, pending social distancing guidelines. More information for the class of 2020, including cap and gown distribution, scholarship recognition, and senior shout outs can be found in the class of 2020 section under students at phs.parklandsd.org. That's all we have for you on this week's edition of Parkland TV Off the Air. I'm Maya Hamla. For more off the air broadcast and content, follow our YouTube and Twitter at Parkland TV Film. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Stay safe and stay healthy, Parkland.